Hello guys, today we are going to talk about the anatomy of mandible. Well, this is the mandible. It is also called the lower jaw and this is the strongest and largest bone of the face. And this mandible is developed from the first pharyngeal arch. And during the development, these each half of the mandible here and here, they grow toward each other and, and they fuse together and form the single bone. The shape of the mandible is horseshoe shape. The mandible is divided into body of mandible and the ramus of mandible. So this is the body of mandible. This is the body of mandible. And the ramus of mandible is on the both sides, right, right ramus and also on the left side. Let's talk about the body of mandible. The body of mandible is divided into two parts. This, the lower part, it is called base of the mandible. This is the base of the mandible, and the upper part, it is called the alveolar process of mandible. These are the upper part and alveolar process of mandible. The body is curved somehow, as you can see, and the it has two surfaces: the external surface and internal surface. These are the external surface. And the internal surface is here. These are the internal surface of body of mandible. And also it has two borders. The superior borders and inferior border. The superior border. These are the superior border and inferior borders. The external surface is marked by the median line called symphysis menta. So this median line is called symphysis menta. And it extends all the way down and form triangular structure and this is called mental protuberance so th in this part the central portion is depressed and and is the sides are a bit raised on the side and these sides are called mental tubercles also on the either side of the uh, symphysis menti there is a depression called incisive fossa so here's a depression and there's a depression these are called incisive fossa and this give origin to the mentalis muscles and orbicularis oris muscles the mental foramen is present here this is the mental foramen and it is present on the both side here and it is present below the second premolar region and uh, this provide the basis for the mental nerves and vessels and the oblique line this is called the oblique line this line runs from the mental tubercle all the way and continues with the anterior border of ramus and this line is called oblique line so this line provide the attachment for the quadratus levia inferioris triangularis and platysma muscles the internal surface of the body of mandible is concave from side to side and near the lower part of symphysis there is a pair, pair of laterally placed spine known as mental spine. So this is the mental symphysis. And on the lower part, there is a pair of spines known as mental spines. And this is also called superior genital tubercles. And just below to these, there is another pair of spines known as inferior genital tubercles. These can be seen properly as it is not shown properly here. And just on the either side there is a depression here and here these are called digastric fossa and it give origin to the anterior belly of digastric muscles this line is called mylohyde line as you can see here there is a line this line it is called mylohyde line and this line extends from the lower part of the symphysis so this is the symphysis and it extends from all the way here and run upward and backward and it give origin to the mylohyde muscles the posterior part of the mylohyde line give attachment to the small part of the superior constrictor muscle of pharynx and terigo mandibular raphe so these are the genital tubercle on the inner surface of the body of mandible so these are the genital tubercles the upper one is called superior genital tubercle and it give origin to the genioglossus muscles and this lower one is the <coughs> inferior genital tubercle and this give origin to the genuohyoid muscles and 
as you can see the Milo height line it runs all uh, all the way from down to upward and this is Milo height line and it give origin to the Milo height muscle now let's talk about the borders of the body of mandible as it has two borders they are superior border and inferior border the superior border has a hollow cavity that receives the teeth and the inferior border is rounded and longer than superior border now let's talk about the ramus of mandible the ramus of mandible is quadrilateral in shape and it has two surfaces this is the lateral surface and on the other side is the medial surface this is the medial surface also it has four borders they are the anterior border this is the anterior border and this is the posterior border and this is the upper border and these are the lower border and it has two process this is the coronoid process and this is the condylar process the anterior border is thin and it is continuous with the oblique line so this is thin and it continues as the oblique line while the posterior border it is thick and smooth and it is covered by parotid gland so this is thick and smooth the upper border is thin and it has two processes the front one is called coronoid process and the behind one is called condylar process and these two processes are separated by deep concavity and this is called mandibular notch the lateral surface of the mandible is flat and marked by oblique crease as in here and these lateral surface give attachment to the masseter muscles while on the medial surface we have the mandibular foramen so this is the mandibular foramen the mandibular foramen provide entrance for the inferior alveolar nerves and vessels the opening of this mandibular foramen is not regular it is irregular in shape and there is a presence of prominent ridge and this prominent ridge is called mandibular lingula and this it is a thin triangular spine and this spine give attachment to the sphenomandibular ligament as you can see there's a groove here that run downward and forward and this is called mylohyoid groove the coronoid process is thin and triangular so here's the coronoid process as you can see it is thin and triangular in shape and it has anterior border and posterior border so this anterior border is convex and while the posterior border is concave uh, the and this is the lateral surface of the coronoid process and it it is smooth and it also provide attachment for the masseter and temporalis muscles uh, while the medial surface as you can see here medial surface this is the medial surface it is it provides attachment for the temporalis muscles the condyloid process is thicker than the coronoid process as you can see and it has two portion the condyle this is the condyle and the constricted portion this one is called the neck of the condyle and the condyle is convex somehow as you can see it is convex and it articulated with the articular disc of TMJ the nerve is supplied by the mandibular nerve which is the division of trigeminal nerve so this is the mandibular nerve and this has many branches which supply the mandible like buccal nerve inferior alveolar nerve nerve to mylohyoid the blood is supplied by the maxillary artery and it gives the another branch which is called inferior alveolar artery and these supply the mandible 